Hello and welcome to the IATB Monash Research Academy. We are in this brightly lit student area in the academy. Um, thank you for joining us in this Facebook live session. My name is Leia and we are joined here by my CEO, Professor Shastri and the current PhD candidate Shivali. They will give us an overview of the IATB Monash as well as share some key insights about the experiences of being part of the academy. So uh, let me give you an introduction. Uh, Dr. Murli Shastri, he is a preeminent scientist and our chief executive officer since 2015. He is known for his studies on surfaces, films and material chemistry. He is a recipient of many awards and honours, especially the prestigious Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award, which is one of the highest Indian science awards. Shivali, who is here, uh, she is in her third year of PhD. She is supervised by Professor Amit Arora from IIT Bombay. Professor Tony Patti and Dr. Vijay Raghavan from Monash. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Um, uh, now we will look forward to answering some of your questions. Please post your comments below. And if you are not joining us live or we, we can't get to your question during the live stream, we'll make sure that we get to it afterwards. So let me begin the conversation. And uh, my question is to you, Dr. Shastri. You. Can you give us an introduction to the IITV Monash Research Academy and what it does? Sure. Thank you, Leanne. I'd be happy to do so. Uh, well, the IITB Monash Research Academy is a, is a joint venture between IIT Bombay and Monash University in Australia. Uh, the academy is now about 10 years old. The academy came into existence in 2008, so a little bit more than 10 years now. Um, and the academy was always intended to foster a joint PhD program to solve problems of uh, global uh, importance. Um, so basically we run a joint PhD program where our students who are basically selected through a very rigorous process, uh, students selected into the academy are jointly supervised by supervisors from IIT Bombay and Monash University. Yes. Uh, we also pride ourselves on the fact that we have a very strong industry connect. Yes. Um, and often we have uh, on our PhD, PhD topics serious mentorship also from industry. So we're looking at problems that really need to be solved as opposed to the standard academic approach of problems that can be solved. Um, in terms of what we do, we are looking at uh, essentially developing a, a PhD program, a training uh, module uh, approach that is quite unique and in tune with the needs of the market today. Um, and that's, that's why we are really very keen on partnerships with, with industry, uh, bringing a, an international flavor to the yes. PhD program by way of the partnership between IIT Bombay and Monash yes. University. So that's basically what the academy, academy does. Is all about. Yeah. And so, would you be able to tell me about the partnership between Monash and IIT Bombay? Sure. Um, as I said, the agreement between IIT Bombay and Monash came in was signed in 2008. The thinking was that there was a need for bringing a, an international collaboration together. Uh, Monash was very keen on establishing a presence in India, and um, the discussions that happened with a number of institutions in India finally led to this partnership with IIT Bombay. Yeah. And if you look at the rankings or whatever metrics you want to use, uh, these are the two leading institutions in their, in their own geography. So I think it was a great uh, partnership, yes. uh, the match that actually happened. Yes. And uh, the thinking was that by bringing this kind of complementarity in terms of skills, capabilities, uh, one has a better chance of, of solving glo global problems yes. using high quality PhD talent. Yes. So, yeah. yes, and how important is this connection between India and Australia? Well, I think if you look at the way in which um, problems are being addressed today, it's not enough to just have a, a single perspective to it. Mm -hmm. The partnership between Australia and India, and I, again, I go back to the point that we're talking about two really leading top-notch institutions, uh, IIT Bombay and Monash. That's right. Uh, the ability to bring a global, international perspective to a PhD topic, I think, is, is the bedrock of this partnership between India and, and Australia. Yes. And as all of you know, uh, the partnership between India and Australia goes beyond education. Yeah. Yeah, we have very strong links in sport, uh, yes. very strong cultural links. Yeah. And so I think all of this plays nicely into the relationship between India and in, uh, Australia and extending it towards education, research, uh, in a very logical sort of way. Yes, that's right. So now uh, moving over to Shivali, how did you find about the IITV Monash Research Academy? So uh, basically I found it on the internet. So 
I did not uh, at that time I did not know it from anybody but yes. then I was looking on to the website of IIT Bombay and the most uh, the best thing that I could see was the IITB Monash program because at that time they were floating the EOI of the project yes. and I got interested into the project. Great. So why did you decide to do a PhD and what is your area of research? So well, uh, I was lucky enough to get very good mentors in my bachelor's and master's program. I could do a couple of uh, very good research projects by the Indian Academy of Sciences. Uh -huh. So they motivated me to join the PhD program in the future. Oh, and uh, I'm basically a chemist by degree, uh -huh. but currently I'm working in the areas of food chemistry and food technology. That's great. And uh, what was an important consideration while you were looking for an institute where you could do your PhD and why exactly did you choose it to be Monash? Yeah, so that, that is a very interesting thing because I was looking into uh, I was looking into to do a PhD in a institute, the premier institute of India and also I was looking into to get a international exposure but then when I looked uh, into the website of the international institutes it was a bit difficult for me to understand the admission procedure and yes. other things so when I looked into the profile of IITB Monash Research Academy yeah. so my all the dreams got fulfilled because okay. I got two uh, eminent institutions yes. and yeah foreign exposure was also there it was really good. Great, great. So if you are joining us live, uh, we are joined by our CEO, Professor Shastri and the current PhD candidate, Shivali. Moving over to Dr. Shastri, um, sure. how many PhDs have you had come through the academy? So we've just crossed the century mark. Uh, I'm really happy to say that we've uh, graduated 111 PhDs in the okay. academy and I think next week yes. we're going to graduate one more. Yes. So the numbers are increasing all the time. Uh, we've had about 320 odd students overall in the academy and right now so if you subtract the 111 we're now at about 180 students in the academy and it's a, I think it's a very sizable number yes. we've recently celebrated our 10th anniversary yes so I think the academy has come uh, a long way long way yeah. yeah so how important is the mobility aspect of the IATB students traveling abroad and what benefits or insights does it offer them well you know, you know it's, it's very common for an Indian student to go overseas for a PhD, right? So for every one Indian student that gets across to either the United States or Europe, there are 10 equally qualified students that don't get across for various reasons, family reasons, financial reasons. That's right. So I think what the academy has been successful in doing is coming up with a hybrid model yeah. where students ten, can do their PhD partly in India and partly in Australia. So you kind of satisfy the need yes. for international exposure. Yes. So I think that's a very important aspect uh, of enabling stu student mobility by way of yes. this uh, joint venture. Yeah. In terms of benefits to the students, well, like I said a little earlier, looking at a, a particular PhD problem uh, from multiple angles is very important. And when I say multiple angles, it, it can be an international approach, right? Sure. There's an Indian perspective to a problem, there's an Australian perspective to a problem. Each institute has its own infrastructure for solving a problem, which, yes. are, which often tend to be complement, complementary. So I think that's another an significant benefit that our students enjoy when they get into the academy. So they look at a problem, part of it is done in India, in and the complementary part that's done in Australia, which, is, Australia. which is hugely beneficial. Yes. And given the fact that we are a global uh, village right now, and students, once they get their PhDs, they could go anywhere in the world for employment. Yes. That exposure, the cultural exposure that you have to a different geography, gives them a kind of a rounding to the personality that you would otherwise not get if you limited yourself to just one country. Yeah. So I think that exposure is also hugely beneficial. Um, interacting with students from multiple nationalities, um, Looking at a PhD problem from a completely different angle, I think all of these are significant benefits. Yes. But I really do think we hear, need to hear it from the horse's mouth, from a student yes. who's actually That's right. been there and done it and, <laughs> uh, and get her perspective on what this sure, mobility means. Sure. Right? So over to you, Shivali. So let me ask you, what has been, how has your been journey in the ITB Monash Research Academy so far? So it has been very good so far. The I have completed three years recently and the journey was really very smooth. Yes. Though I, I also encountered episodes of PhD stress, which is I think v is very common when you are pursuing a doctorate degree. Yes, right. But uh, I got uh, various opportunities to present my work in different conferences. Yes. So those things were really very good. And especially I would like to mention about the highly equipped uh, academy labs because those uh, equipments have given me a uh, great potential to do a very high quality research. Yes. So uh, coming over to what we were speaking with Dr. Shastri, what was your experience at Monash University because you recently returned from Monash after yeah. this one year stay? 
yeah so yeah as professor shastri mentioned it was a very good exposure over there yeah. i could get a couple of travel grants and present my uh, research in international conferences and uh, secondly i also got opportunity to learn different uh, lab cultures so that i am implementing now after coming back here and also i could collaborate with different industries who are really very interested in our research yeah. and maybe we will develop partnerships with them in the future um over to dr shastri um what do you see as some of the global challenges that need to be solved this is pretty straightforward i think the global challenges that uh, face pretty much everyone right be it climate change yeah um areas such as sustainability nutrition um the whole ecosystem that's evolving around you know what they call the cradle to cradle kind of an approach I think these are all common problems that India and, and Australia face, and um, the solutions that we come up with through the PhD program are actually applicable across across the world. So, in terms of global challenges, I think I would also like to add to the mix uh, what impact artificial intelligence would have yes. broadly in education, in the job market, how it's going to impact industry at large. I think that's another significant global challenge that I'm really happy to say the academy is looking at quite seriously. so these are the th some of the things that uh, need to be solved uh, in terms of how we would solve it obviously we are an academic institution right. we rely heavily on industry inputs so yes. that's i mean again i get back to the point that we are really proud of the industry connect that we have exactly. they they tell us what problems need to be solved and our students and high quality supervisory talent we then come up with solutions for solutions. these kind of global challenges Okay, and uh, can you tell us how the academy brings a solution-driven approach to addressing these global problems? I think I kind of partly answered this question through my previous thing, but I'll just just reiterate. Yes. Um, industry engagement, mm -hmm. engagement with government. Yes. Uh, we get a, a clear insight as to the kind of problems that uh, Australia and India face. Yes. Our okay. job is then to bring the problem in. Mm. get high quality talent working on it yeah bring in the infrastructure the complementary infrastructure at idb and monash to solve the problem yes and uh, i think we've been pretty successful uh if you look at our output in terms of publications we've been pretty good at patenting yes. we've filed a large number of patents which i'm really really happy about yes and uh, the other thing i wanted to add is our students are uh, the alumni that we have 111 alumni are going places yeah so in terms of where they're getting recruited 30% plus are in industry that's a very pleasing statistic statistic uh, we have a large number of students who are now pursuing their postdocs and then they will then decide whether they want to get into academics or industry but the thing that i really wanted to highlight is the three startups that came out of the academy yeah. so our students are not just high quality phd students they're yeah. very entrepreneurial as well so we've had one startup called convolis which has um, uh, the the student who was working on that is shubhadeep das dr shubhadeep das yes he's taken his company to san francisco mm -hmm. it's incorporated there and uh, we're putting a lot of hopes on startups such as these yeah. uh because i think that's that's the new wave of what uh the academy must True. be known for high True. quality talent that the academy is producing but also talent that's going out there and solving problems beyond what they've done during their phd yes that's right yeah. that's right and now shivali how do you feel your itb monash research academy education is helping you to make a change or an impact in the world yeah so as uh, professor shastri has also said so currently in my perspective to see a problem has completely changed so previously uh, when i used to do some projects so it was more focused upon the indian approach only but now when i look into the problem then i think to make some solution that is uh, feasible globally yes. so that is one of the major change that i have encountered in myself right and uh, not to be last uh, has this joint phd program changed you Yes, of course. As I mentioned, I, I, yes. I, my complete mindset has changed. Yeah. Means I think globally, and also this program has given me um, so much opportunity to present my work that yes. I am now more confident to speak in, uh, uh, in scientific gatherings, in industrial gatherings. Yeah. So yeah, I have improved as a person. I think. Great. And last but not the least, one question which is there for both of you. First, maybe Professor Shastri would like to answer that. Do you have any advice for students who are thinking of applying for the joint PhD? program okay i'm going to hand it over to shivali first because okay. i think it should come up from a phd sure. student but i do need to add to what shivali said about her own transformation yes i've seen shivali when she came into the academy yeah. and i see her now very yes. close to the point of submission and yes. it's a completely different person <laughs> extremely self confident um 
and you know, the kind of work that she's doing also has gone a, a made a significant change. Yes. So I think it's been very a, a very positive, positive transformation, and it's delightful to see how she's growing, and not just as a scientist, but as a as a, as a person. Yeah. So you answer the question, and I'll come back <laughs> to the other. Uh, yeah, so my advice would be that if you are going uh, ahead with the uh, application, then just just go ahead. It's it's all fine. Uh, just you have to see that the project that you choose should be uh, means you should be interested in that project and you should have some expertise. The rest of it can be built up here, but the some expertise of that project and yeah, just come here because rest of the PhD will be taken care of by the academy. You just have to work hard. Yeah, thanks. I think Shivali said it, uh, you have to work very hard and um, it's very important to come into the PhD program for the right reasons. Yes. Um, there's a tendency to go with the flow. Yes. Once you finish your master's, there's a tendency to just go ahead and do your PhD. But I think what we're trying to tell our students is come in for, to the PhD program for the right reasons. You should figure in uh, uh, long term thinking. The PhD should mean yes. something in your career, say, 20 years from now. So have that thinking in place. And again, like Shivali said, um, the nice thing about the Academy PhD program is that it's a project-based PhD program. Yes. So you get to know upfront what problem you're going to be working on. And therefore, you have a much better sense of uh, saying yes or no to a PhD topic. You know exactly what you're going to be doing, roughly. Uh, and that helps you in your decision making. So be careful in choosing the project. And once you're in, of course, it's, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Yes. If it's not fun, it's not worth doing. Yeah. It'll be a lot of fun, but it also requires you to do a lot of hard work. Hard work. Right, uh, it's it's easier said than done. There are a lot of challenges with respect to uh, being in a program where you're guided by at least two supervisors. You have to manage expectations, so uh, I need to put everything on the table. But it's you grow as a person. If you're able to handle expectations of multiple uh, stakeholders like this, then you learn to look at a problem in many different ways. But you also learn to manage relationships. Yeah. So that's another very important aspect of the academy. And if you, I think students will benefit. So they come in. So do consider the academy very seriously for your PhD program. Uh, if you look at the way the academy has performed, our students are going places. So uh, there's a track record that we can talk about. That's, so you can certainly look at that and 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 come into the academy. Um, the EOIs are open yes. for the next intake, which is going to happen in December. So those of you who are interested, please put in your application ASAP. Right? And good luck with your, your application. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining in this conversation. Unfortunately, we are out of time. And I would like to thank our panelists again, Dr. Shastri and Shivali, for yeah, sharing their insights and experiences about the Academy. For everyone who tuned in today, thank you for joining us. And we hope you enjoyed the session. If we have not been able to answer your questions, please, and if you have joined us at a later time, please stay rest assured we would get back to you. And please remember to check our website for more information. It's www.itvmonash.org. Thank you. Thank you.